We're actually very excited to be working with Dr. Church, Ardrill Naffer, and more. We feel that what they're going to do is actually validate what we've all inherently believed for a long time, that this solution is far more complicated than simply plugging in a program. That uh, for us to be more effective for you, we need to be design consultants, not vendor selectors. We need to help you figure out what kind of program is going to make the most sense for you. So we're going to start with three specific areas within our new, newly branded Locked on Health Risk Solutions practice. Uh, we're going to look at demand side management. Uh, we need, through that design consulting, you know, what makes the most sense if we need to influence your population? What does your population look like? What's the turnover? If you have a high turnover, there's a very specific program that's going to make sense for you, and pretty much nothing else will. You know, what's the gender makeup, male-female mix, uh, average contract size, do you have a lot of dependents? If we know within a family unit that 80% uh, of the families, the female actually makes the purchasing decisions, that will dictate how quickly you need to bring a spouse in into the program. And so understanding that portion can help us really control the risks that are controllable in nature. We understand there are risks that are not. And for those that aren't, we need a better means or more efficient means of risk transference addressing that through both supply side and the transfer method. We've seen data recently that shows since the removal of the lifetime maximum, there's been a 70% increase in claim, the mega claims and claims over a million dollars. I mean, think about that. That's a, a massive number, 70% increase. Of those claimants, we're seeing that about 85% of those are not lifestyle related. So they're actually things that aren't controllable. So we need to create a methodology to transfer that risk away from you as efficiently as possible whether it's through our stop loss purchasing, the efficient frontier that Ed and Eric explained earlier, using wellness programs to help actually be a financial underwriting tool for you. So once we know who you are, going through all the information of your population, the most important piece of anything we can do is determine what is success for you. Christian mentioned earlier, there are two very different types of programs in the marketplace, actually three, uh, and based on your responses, people kind of fall all over the spectrum. There are cultural programs, and financial ones, and the two lead to very different results. Traditionally, we've all looked at cultural programs, hoping that they would lead to the reduced health care costs. Cultural programs focus on health promotion, on uh, pushing out education, rewards for participating in certain activities. So those traditionally lead to very low ROI, two to three, four to one return on investment. That's a small percentage of your total spend. You're looking at maybe 2% of your total spend. That's going to do nothing to your health care costs. However, you can look at a financial program that focuses on uh, disincentives, focuses on influencing the population that's sick by directly impacting health outcomes. Those can lead to quicker returns, get you to that three or four to one immediately, hopefully lead to the bigger return down the road. So the, the, the solution is finding the right mix for you. And that, that's a unique solution for you that we have to find based on what it is that you want to achieve. Either way, the programs are going to be designed and measured by looking at claims information, predictive modeling through the claims, and merging it with biometric data. Both programs want to effectively do the same thing. They want to get people healthier. And if they're not doing that, then we're not going to see reductions in claims. Through that, we need to look at all the information. We want to have the largest database of its kind that looks at the biometric information and claims. And through the science and economics partnerships with Dr. Church and Arjun Leffer and more, Look at this in a more specific and surgical way, actually, so we can come up with the right designs, the right programs that make sense for you only after we've seen your data and figured out who you are. Because it wouldn't make any sense for us to try and be a risk management tool for you, to help build programs for you without knowing who you are, where your risks lie, what is it that you actually want to achieve, what's the best way to actually engage those programs. For your pre-emergent population, we need to influence that population do you do it through an incentive, a disincentive? Do you tie it to contributions? And ultimately, the biggest question is, do you tie it to health outcomes? If you want to manage that population and prevent them from becoming the chronic diseased individuals that are, that are hitting your plan currently. And the last piece, and the biggest myth of wellness programs out there is that they're going to remove all your large claims. It's going to drop that piece for you. You're going to be great, good to go. We're actually not seeing that. Obviously, the, the stat that I just gave you was very alarming. But if you look at all claimants, everyone in this room falls somewhere in what we call power law distribution. We argued before this presentation whether or not to get into something like this. Um, but power law effectively is just the 80-20 rule. So large instances are rare. 
the small instances are actually much more common from a probability perspective. So we know from our own data that 0.6% of the population generates about 29% of total claims. So we're not looking at 80-20, we're gonna look at a, a smaller piece of that, of that portion. But of that 29% of claims, the majority of those claims, claimants or claims are not lifestyle related. So the important thing to understand is that to have a truly complete health risk solution for your organization, we need to influence the population the way, influence the entire population to do whatever it is that we need them to do to achieve the goals that you've defined through sort of the, the success that we want to create. Mitigate the many, the, the individuals on the right. So keeping them from becoming the chronically ill, or if they're chronically ill, finding better solutions for them. And then for those, that population that's, that's non-controllable, understand that they're not controllable and find more efficient means of transferring that risk away from you so we can create more sustainability and predictability in that really in that, that crazy environment. So these points are so big, I'm actually gonna do the dramatic jacket takeoff for this slide. I've always wanted to do this in front of an audience. That's how huge this next discussion point is. Let's get honest about it. It isn't just wellness. We all come out and tell you, look, we get everybody healthy, claims will go to zero. Claims will go to nothing. Look, we get everyone to lost weight, the claims will come down. There is a huge, huge, huge supply side to discussion to be had here. It's one of the reasons health risk solutions focuses on the three components. Transfer the stuff you can't control, control the stuff you can through demand side management, but there's a massive supply side issue here. This slide says a lot about it. Basically, we're doing a lot more than anyone else and getting almost no yield for it. And by the way, we're not four times as sick as the OECD average or the other industrialized countries. This says basically cardiac procedures, so grafts and stents. Next slide, Rich. The supply of our just radiology is off the charts five times, six times, the number of procedures we do, and yet don't get the yield. And again, we are not that sick. We have got to get the hospitals involved. We have got to get the providers involved and work the supply side to more align care to the patient and utilize your dollars more effectively as you work to transfer and mitigate and, and control that risk. Yeah.